<laughs> as you know, uh, as you know, and as uh, uh, our MC has just said, uh, or somebody else did say this, <clears throat> that I was asked to introduce uh, uh, the Prime Minister Haile Mariam Dezalen. Uh, I asked the organizers how long I have <laughs> to introduce him. <clears throat> they said uh, a minute or two. <laughs> oh, I'm taking my watch off. Uh, MC, Sumatra. <clears throat> when I come to two minutes, stop me. Because they said a minute or two. I want to be two minutes. But uh, uh, Prime Minister Ali Mariam is, uh, I'm introducing him. <laughs> is an engineer. Um, at some point specialized in water engineering. He has been a, a university teacher, has been a, a state manager in the public service. He has been prime minister, no, no, no. He has been foreign minister, then deputy prime minister, and Prime Minister. That's two minutes. There's one thing again that is common between uh, the Prime Minister Haile Mariam and myself, in that uh, he resigned from government last year. You remember I did that some years before him. <laughs> under very different circumstances. <laughs> His resignation was good. <clears throat> I will say nothing about the other resignation. <clears throat> you know, at the end uh, of each one of our uh, Africa Day lectures, we spent quite a bit of time discussing the question as to what do we do for next year. And when we raised this matter last year, uh, somebody did say, uh, MC, that uh, this would be the tenth uh, Africa Day lecture. And so the idea came, I don't know from where, that maybe we should ask the Prime Minister, Ida Mariam, to deliver this lecture. We all agreed. And there were two reasons for that. One was uh, historical. I think as South Africans here, yeah, we all know that Ethiopia has been with us in the public consciousness of many of our people at the center of the striving to liberate this country since the 19th century. Our, best, our very first modern intellectuals, people like Diosoga, spoke about Ethiopia in the context of our struggle even then. And all of us know that when Africans broke away from the churches which had come from Europe, the precursors of our liberation movement here, those churches, they call themselves the Ethiopian Church. Yeah. 
I'm sitting next to a, a Pani Pichana. You know him as a professor and things like that. <coughs> but he's a reverend. He's also reverend Pani Pichan. So what I'm going to read here, he will know. Pani comes from Psalm 68. You know therefore what it is. It says, rebuke the company of spearmen, the multitude of the bulls, with the calves of the people, till everyone submit himself with pieces of silver. Scatter thou the people that delight in war. Princes shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall soon stretch out their hands, unto God. And this is why you had the Ethiopian churches. They took this from Psalm number 68 of the Holy Bible. You'd find uh, the historians among us will know this. You'd find, for instance, in colonial documents of colonial Natal, when they were talking about the person who became the first president of the ANC, John, John Dube, they called him an Ethiopian. The reason for that was because at the turn of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th, what came to be called in this country, African nationalism, was then called Ethiopianism. I'm saying this is a historical connection that we have with Ethiopia, that our struggle has with Ethiopia over a long period of time. And so when we said this is the 10th, 10th, 10th Africa Day lecture, we said, look, let's, let's, let's go and fetch that Ethiopian. Um, <laughs> and the other reason, apart from that historical one, was a strategic one. Um, a premier, uh, Haile Mariam's predecessor, was Meles Zanawi. Um, and there's one thing that Meles kept raising with me, which was a complaint. It was a complaint about how we were handling ourselves as South Africans and particularly as the ANC. And he would say to me, you know very well the things that we're trying to do in Ethiopia, for instance, with the economy, which some other people in the world don't like. For instance, just as an example, uh, <coughs> banking, banking that Ethiopia would not allow foreign banks to come into Ethiopia. This was to ensure that you develop the indigenous banking system and make sure that it has the resources, capital available to develop the Ethiopian economy. That it would be better at that point not to allow an entry by the foreign banks. So Meles would then say to me, you know very well that there are many people in the world who disagree with that. Who we'll talk about globalization and opening up of markets and you know all of that. And he says to me, but the reason we are doing it in Ethiopia is because we know we've got South Africa that will defend us. <laughs> and if you people continue to go this wrong direction which we are going, we will lose that defense and it will be impossible for us to transform Ethiopia. He would raise this thing consistently with me and indeed he, in many instances, was much better educated about South Africa than I was. We have continued to that tradition with the Prime Minister Halimaria of 
engaging each other about Ethiopia, about South Africa, about his political party, the EPRDF, and about the ANC. And an interesting thing is uh, that many of the troubles and problems that the ANC is experiencing now, the EPRDF has experienced. So it's possible to discuss all this and for me to say to him, what shall we do? And drawing on the experience of the EPRDF, he sees suggestions which he puts to me, which I shall not disclose. Um, but they are about what is it that we need to do in order to build the kind of organization that our continent needs in order to be able to carry out its tasks of recon reconstruction. That's the advice he gives. <coughs> It's a vice which is very easy to understand because it comes from practical experience. Ethiopia also is very important because for a number of years now it has responded under the leadership of the EPRDF in very, very interesting ways to the challenges of development. a task which faces us globally on the continent, a challenge of development. And there are many, many things that we can learn from Ethiopia about how to address that question. I'm saying these are strategic considerations about the politics of Africa, the political organizations, the progressive ones, challenges of development, the only government on the continent currently which has got 50-50 uh, uh, representation of gender, national government is Ethiopia. There's no other. <laughs> uh, so there are many things that it seemed to us as we listened to this 10th uh, Africa Day lecture on an important issue, the national question, which even in this country has not been solved. In certain senses, we have regressed. That's why you get these notions of 100% uh, Zulu. That's a regression. <laughs> uh, <coughs> we can't. <coughs> But it addresses, it points to the importance of the lecture that we're about to listen to on the national question. And my view it, uh, is that uh, there's no better person to de deliver it than uh, Prime Minister Haile Maria. Welcome. Thanks. <laughs>